I'm in Hereford Cathedral today for a vision, not just any vision, a vision of the entire universe. Hereford Cathedral is a magnificent medieval structure. Standing in the centre of an idyllic small town in the southwest of England, it forms the spiritual heart of a rural area with beautiful landscapes and lots of agriculture. I have come to see one of its greatest treasures, the Hereford Mapa Mundi, a medieval map of the world. Hi, I'm Dr. Carl Frey, and this is Elagast Media, where we make advanced historical knowledge both accessible and fun. Thank you very much for tuning in. What I want to do today is, I guess, ask you to subscribe to the channel. But other than that, travel back in time 700 years, all the way to the 13th century. And there, I want to travel with you across the Hereford world map to take a look at what the world was like back then. This was a world very different from the world we live in now. There were no airplanes, there was no Netflix, Amazon didn't exist, Shakespeare hadn't been born. In fact, this world was still populated by wonder and mystery. God the Great Creator was part of everything that people could feel, touch, see and hear, and the outer edges of the world were allegedly populated by strange peoples, people who had feet as big as umbrellas, or perhaps faces in their chest. Nobody knew. And nobody knew what was beyond the places where those people lived. Perhaps those were the dwelling places of mythical creatures like dragons or elephants or crocodiles. All right, because we're talking about a medieval map today, I promise to shed some light on a mystery I know you've heard about before. And that is that medieval people believed that the world was flat. But did they? In fact, they didn't. The Hereford map tells us why. It all starts with the name of the thing, Mapa Mundi. That is a Latin phrase that nowadays is often translated as map of the world. But to my mind, this is actually a mistranslation. Latin Mapa in the 13th century actually didn't mean map in the modern sense. At that time, it meant cloth or textile. This is also the reason why the English words napkin, nappy and map all sound a bit similar. And that is because they all look back to that same Latin word mappa, which used to mean cloth. So not only is the Hereford world map not a modern map, it is actually not a map in the modern sense of the word. If you would try to find your way from England to Scotland on this map, you'd be hopelessly lost. Those countries are not represented in any way as they would be represented on a modern map. They're hardly recognizable and it's very difficult to find Hereford on the map even though the map was probably produced there. This map, it doesn't do scales, it doesn't do routes, it doesn't do roads and it certainly doesn't do accurate coastlines. You're not the only one if that would leave you at a bit of a loss as to where to find Hereford on the map. In fact, back in the day, in the 13th century, pilgrims that would come into Hereford Cathedral with one specific purpose and that was to visit the shrine of Thomas Cantaloupe, who was a bishop who presided over the cathedral at around the same time the map was made. After visiting that shrine, they would turn to the Hereford world map, which was displayed in the cathedral, and there they would try, of course, to look at where they were. And so they would stand, together or alone, for hours and hours, I imagine, just looking at all these places, and not knowing where to find Hereford. Until finally, maybe one pilgrim would be able to find it and in the sheer joy of that moment of discovery, he would point at the map and place his finger on the name Hereford. And in fact, all this behavior over time has led to the fact that Hereford is all but rubbed off the map. People just have kept pointing and pointing and pointing at it. And now we can't see where it is anymore. 
The Hereford world map was created long before Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492 and for that reason America is not on there. Also, the British Isles look like a misshapen vegetable and are positioned awkwardly all the way to the edges of the frame. Hereford has been rubbed off beyond recognition. What exactly is this map good for, I hear you asking? So let me get to that now. The Hereford world map is not actually an attempt to accurately map out the Earth's geography. Instead, it is an attempt to give a vision of God's creation. Remember, this is a 13th century product. So in the center of the map, we find the holiest place on Earth, Jerusalem, which by now has been a point of fascination for generations and generations of European crusaders. Not far from it, we find the Tower of Babel, which is of course the birthplace of all the Earth's languages according to the Bible, and all the way in Armenia we find Noah's Ark, where medieval legend had it, Noah docked in on a mountaintop after the floodwaters had receded. Medieval Christians were very well aware that they'd inherited the world from the Romans and from the Greeks, and for that reason, we see some of the stories from these ancient civilizations on the Hereford map as well. Let's take a look at Crete. Here we see a structure of concentric rings that looks like a labyrinth, and the reason it looks like a labyrinth is because it is. Crete during the Middle Ages was known as the historic home of the Minotaur, a monster from ancient Greece that had allegedly been half bull, half man, and that had had the nasty habit of eating seven boys and seven girls every seven years. Finally, a Greek hero by the name of Theseus put a stop to all that, but not before a lot of those boys and girls were made to wander into the cage of the Minotaur, which was, in fact, a labyrinth. But what is perhaps even more important is what we see beyond the edges of the map. Medieval maps tend to point their top eastwards rather than northwards as we do today, and the Hereford Mapamundi is no exception. In fact, they had stolen that practice from the Romans, but during Christianity, that idea of pointing the top of the map towards the rising sun, towards the east, became much more significant. And indeed, if we look towards that top spot of the map, we see the holiest sight of all, Jesus himself, sitting enthroned like a lord, watching over his earthly kingdom. On his left, we see the souls of the saved, and they are allowed to rise up out of their coffins and to go to heaven. On his right, however, we see the souls of the damned, and they are being led away by demons into the bestial mouth of hell, where they are going to endure eternal torment. Here we come to an incredibly important conclusion about the Hereford world map. It is not just a depiction of space, it is also a depiction of time. It shows the world as it is, yes, but also as it was and how it will be. The entire trajectory of humankind's history is recorded on the map, from the very early beginnings with Adam and Eve in paradise, through Greek and Roman antiquity, and with the final possible destinations of either heaven and hell. All of this is recorded on the map. If it does not show pilgrim audiences in the Cathedral of Hereford where exactly they are, it does tell them something else. It tells them what they are, and tells them where they have come from and where they should try to go. Ordinarily, I would call it a day now, but I did make a promise earlier and I intend to keep it. So, did medieval people believe the earth was flat? The short answer is no. The Hereford map is actually very clear that the world is an orb. It says so in its description of the city of Rome. The reason the map is round is exactly the same as the reason why some modern maps are round. Only shows half the globe. Medieval scholars followed ancient Greek philosophers in supposing that our round planet was subdivided into five climate zones. Of those, only the middle two were thought to be inhabitable. Nobody knew what happened on the other side of the world because it was allegedly impossible to traverse the death zone in the middle that separated the Earth's two inhabitable parts. The circular map we see in the Cathedral of Hereford is thus a projection of half of a full globe. 
Cool fact, medieval scholars called the hypothetical people on the other side of the world the antipodes, because those people supposedly had their feet against ours. That's what antipodes means in ancient Greek. All right, and with that I leave you. You now have sacred knowledge to debunk one of the most common myths about the Middle Ages. I hope you've had a good time traveling across the Hereford world map with me. If you feel you've gotten value from this video, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, or, uh, or what else can you do? Uh, hit the notification bell. Thank you very, very much for watching. My name is Dr. Carl Frey. This is Elegast Media, and have a wonderful day.